Welcome back to No Onions Allowed, my keto kitchen. I am in preparation for the brisket uh, beef burgers. Uh, I have prepared bacon for the burgers and also baking um, that I'm going to pack up just to have during the week. And right here, we have our brisket burgers frying up in the pan. And when they are complete, we will be right back. So our burgers have formed a nice brown ring around them, indicating that it's time for them to be flipped. So I'm going to go ahead and give those a flip, and then we'll be right back. So we have our burgers flipped. We've got a really nice caramelization on the bottom. And what we'll do is probably leave it on here for maybe another three minutes. I don't like to cook them well done because these are for meal prep. Uh, well, one is for tonight. The other three are for meal prep. And when you cook them well done, then you have to go back and reheat them in the microwave. They tend to get kind of tough. So I leave them a little pink in the middle so that when we do microwave them, then they're fully cooked. And they won't be tough. They'll still, still be nice and juicy. Okay, so once these are done, we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. So I have my three <clears throat> brisket bacon cheeseburgers prepared along with lettuce and tomato. Um, you can wrap the burger in the lettuce and eat it that way. Or do how I do. I take the keto bagels and use them as buns. And they come out. I mean, I tell you, you think you're eating a whole hamburger with bun. It's so delicious. And the, the brisket... Um, what I did is I went to Sprouts and picked out a nice piece of brisket and asked the butcher to ground it up for me. And, you know, when you're nice to people, they do things for you. <laughs> so that's how I got the uh, grounded brisket burgers. Um, and so with that, and then I have some extra bacon that I made so I can eat for breakfast or just the munch on during the day. Um, since I don't eat like I'm supposed to, I'm trying to do better with that. Um, with my burger that I have set aside for me to eat tonight, I'm just going to eat that with a little side salad. And, um, without the, without the bagel, I'm just going to eat the meat, cheese, and bacon with a little side salad with some fabulous lighthouse ranch I showed you in my haul. You should try it. It does not have any soybean oil, which is wonderful because that's an inflammatory agent. And I don't need to be inflamed anymore. One more thing that I take um, because I never had my thyroid tested, but I know I have thyroid issues. That's why my food digests slowly. I don't have any metabolism. So I've been taking this. And I got this from Amazon. And I noticed a difference right away. The first day I took it, I had more energy than I ever had before. So I'm going to continue to take these um, along with my MCT oils and whatnot so that I can uh, just make sure I stay healthy in this process. I try to be sufficient with the uh, vitamin support and the supplements because... You know, my doctor told me that I was malnutrition, and I, and it blew me away and knocked me off my chair. I said, uh, what you mean? <laughs> what you talking about, Willis? And he said, yeah, you're malnutrition. You have low in, you're low in everything. You're low in your potassium. You're low in your vitamin D. You're low in this. You're low in that. You're low in that. So, and I know it's because I don't eat, so... Um, I'm taking a lot of supplements to make sure I try to stay up float. But the low potassium thing, that's just uh, something I have. It's hypokalemia. And if you never heard of it, uh, my potassium is just low, period. I have to do things to keep it up. I take potassium drops. Um, I used to drink the Liquid K. Um, but they stopped making it. I can't find it anywhere. Anywhere. Not even on Amazon. And you know, they have everything. Okay. So, um, the liquid K would make, uh, literally, I would get through the week with that. If I started to feel low, and how you feel low with your potassium, is really dangerous to have low potassium because you can um, 
potassium supports your muscles and so it also supports your heart because your heart is a muscle so when your potassium is low your muscles start to spaz you start to get cramping like charlie horses and um it will affect your heart so i try to keep myself with potassium in my system it's really hard though especially now since i don't have the liquid k but when i had that liquid k i just take a couple of sweets of that and i'd be all right <laughs> But the drops, um, it just tastes like I'm, just tastes like I'm putting a, a, a salt bomb in my mouth, you know. But I have to do it in order to, you know, keep the potassium, keep me from being in the hospital, getting potassium pumped into me. So, um, I don't want to go through that. I've already done it twice. I don't want to do it again. So, that's my life. But anyway, so we got these done. And so I think um, in the previous video, I wanted you guys to um, decide if I should do the coconut shrimp or the um, no-bake cheesecake. Well, uh, hello, I just started this channel. I don't have any subscribers yet, so how can you guys vote? <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make the no-bake cheesecake. And then on another day, I'll make a bake, one that you have to put in the oven, cheesecake, but not today. I don't have the right uh, essentials for that. But I can make the no-bake cheesecake. I'm going to do that in a few minutes. So I'm going to pack these away and get them in the fridge and uh, prepare my island for the no-bake cheesecake. So I'll be right back. Okay, guys, this is my dinner. Um, yes, I added some tomatoes. Tomatoes do have a little bit of carbs in them, um, and I think, I want to say three grams for a medium-sized tomato, but this was a small Roma tomato, so I'm not getting the whole three, and I think that's the only carb. Uh, spinach has one gram. I forget for how much. I think a fourth of a cup, but that's not even a fourth of a cup that I have on my plate, so... I'm going to stick with the three grams of carbs for my dinner. Um, I'm going to eat this, and then we're going to go ahead with the cheesecake. Yay! Okay, guys, I am back. So we're getting ready to make our no-bake cheesecake. And what I have is my, this is a nine-inch baking dish. And looking at a couple of recipes, I saw people using almond flour as the crust. I am not, I can't wrap my head around that right now so I'm gonna take the easy route I went and got a package of the sugar-free pecan shortbread I thought wow this now this might be okay so I'm gonna take a pack of these I'm gonna take them I'm gonna put them because I'm being super lazy I'm gonna take the whole pack Lay them in the Ziploc bag. Then I'm going to beat this bag to death like it stole something from me. And get it all crumbled up and nice. And then I'll be right back. Alright, here's the finished product. I just took the rolling pin. And I beat the hell out of it like it stole something from me. And rolled it across. And because it's shortbread, it really broke up very well. It wasn't hard at all. Took all of I don't know, five minutes maybe. So we're going to get this prepared. I'm going to get it in a bowl, add some melted butter, and get it ready for the pan. Okay, guys, I am back. So I emptied the content into a bowl. I'm so excited. This is shortbread pecan. I'm so excited. Okay. Then I have four tablespoons of melted curry goat butter. I'm going to pour in here. Uh oh, might be. We're gonna get this mixed up until it's nice and crumbly, and then we'll place it in our pan. Okay, so we got it nice and crumbly. So I'm gonna add it to our dish here. Adding it all. Pat it out 
and I'm going to take it up the sides because I like for my crust to be up the sides. I have my oven preheated to 350. So that we can bake this and get it nice and tight. Nice and tight and everything right. <laughs> oh my God, I'm getting so excited. Can't wait. Cannot wait to dig into this. Spread some of the love over here on this side. take my hand and see that move some of that over all right now that we got this ready I'm gonna take it pop it in the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes and I'll let it cool while we're making the filling for this bad boy. Be right back. Okay guys, so I'm lazy. I did not want to do this by hand. So we're gonna start off with a half a cup of heavy whipping cream. I'm gonna add that to my super big, my super big blender. KitchenAid. I'm going to add this to the dash of the part that kind of hung on to the measuring cup. So I'm going to add just a tiny bit. There we go. Nice stiff peaks. Okay, so we got it at nice stiff peaks. So I'm gonna scrape this off, put it in a separate bowl, and then we're gonna get the cream cheese going. Okay, guys, so what I did was I added in two blocks of Philadelphia cream cheese. I added in one cup of sour cream, and now I'm about to add one cup. Let's see where's my one cup. One cup of my Swerve sugar replacement. There we go. One cup. And that right on in there with the other ingredients. Then we're gonna get this all mixed together. Once this is mixed together, I'll add in the whipping cream that we've already whipped to stiff peaks. And then um, hopefully the crust has cooled by then. In fact, let me show you this wonderful crust. Still warm. I'm going to stick it in the fridge. Woo! Yes, still hot. This is our wonderful crust. Nice and golden brown. I'm going to place that in the fridge so it can cool off so that we can put our filling in and have some cheesecake. Okay, I've switched out our blade. and We're going to get this started. Let me raise the bowl. Start 
start off slow so we won't have dust flying everywhere. And the blade that I put in actually scrapes the sides of the bowls for us. I'll speed it up a little bit. And once we get this all mixed up, I'll be right back. Okay guys, real quick, I stopped the blending because I'm supposed to add two cups of replacement sweetener and only add it once. So I'm adding the second cup right here, right now. And we're going to carry on. Before we carry on, another ingredient that's important. One and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract. Well, I'm sorry. Since I'm making double the size, this would be um, three teaspoons. There we go. Three teaspoons of vanilla extract. Oh, it smells so good. Oh man, this is wonderful. We have that all mixed up. So now what we're gonna do is add in our whipped cream mixture that we did earlier. Right. We're gonna add that into the bowl and then we'll get that all mixed up. Got our crust, beautiful, nice and cooled off out of the fridge. And now, we're going to get this filling placed inside our crust. <clears throat> and then it's going to go back in the fridge probably overnight. Probably overnight. So I can be nice and stiff when we eat it. Oh, it smells so yummy. Too bad my daughter's not here to scrape the bowl. That's what we used to do when we were little. Scrape the bowl. Move this in. Oh. I let this blend for a long time and it's not quite as smooth as I wanted it to be, but I guess it'll work. Alright, so we're going to put this back in the oven. In the oven. <laughs> this is going in the fridge overnight. Once it's finished, you know who you are. You better come get you some. So until next time. There you have it. We're going to place that back in the refrigerator. Overnight. And then Marie. Adam, you better come get it. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe. If you subscribe, please press the notification button so you can get notified every time one of my awesome videos is uploaded. 
If you think I'm cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, share it with a friend. So until next time, peace, love, and soul.